<laughs> so for every negative, there is a positive. There are people out there doing the positive thing. But the reality of it is what true information you do put out there. Is that you? He's not going to tell. He's laughing. I mean, he's, he's, yeah, I'm the man. Do you know him? Ah, that, that smile says you do. So what are we supposed to walk away from all this? It's like the big thing we have to watch out for is all the information that we share. Um, if Multigo ever works, well, it's not Multigo, it's Windows. Hmm, Jack Daniel. Anybody want a drink? So here's a perfect example of Multigo. So it sits there, it spiders you, it goes out, it finds everybody you talk to. It knows everybody you talk to on every forum. Okay? It starts providing you with phone numbers related to people. All right, and I figure, you know, I'm a safe candidate. Everybody knows. But there, are, there were other people. All right, it shows every domain name that you own. So if you're out there buying, like, freak, freaky domain names, they'll know about it. It'll find it. So any questions? Yes? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sure, not a problem. So back on December 26th, I had started an experiment, called, and I had named it Robin Sage for that particular reason, because I, I wanted to make everything about the experiment obvious. First one, by picking the name. The name was picked after Army Special Forces. The second was Facebook. Okay. How, how do you populate? You start doing, you know, building out everything from the beginning. You create these profiles. You look and see what the profile does. Then you start, you pick a targeted community. I picked the security community first. Wow. So you asked a bad question. I just lost half my audience. <laughs> what? Boo oh, the booze. That's right. All right. So, Built out the profile, you go after the targeted audience. The three targeted people I chose were Jeremiah, Mark, and, da and Dan. Why? Because they were the target for the security community, not because of any other reason. They're well known, they're well respected, and if people see that you're related to them, they, they trust. Okay? They'll automatically trust you. And then what happens after that is it'll say, you should know this person, and start populating. And a lot of people will sit there and click yes. All right. From that, once you click yes, what happens? All right. You then show that person your information. So now they have your email address, your phone number, your aim, everything like that. Everything that's associated with you. Okay. If they have a Facebook app, then it downloads all your personal information into your BlackBerry or your iPhone. All right. Then you can take other tools and spoof and pretend you're somebody else calling for information. So that was pretty much the whole premise of the presentation. What? What data did I get? Uh, various people, uh, we got different data. Some people we, we chose to profile using different tools like Multigo and Spoco and a few others. Um, let me think, who can I Google? Anyone know Dan Kaminsky's email? No. Um, okay. Oh. 
Wrong password. What? Oh, that's why my email address, good catch. Two T's. So, Tom B at OWASP blood work. Ah. <laughs> what? You won't find anything. Well, this connection's a dog. <laughs> You're taking her to dinner? Yeah. But you weren't on the list. <laughs> no, you didn't ask her to take to her a rave. <laughs> so, it's basically every blog posting about Jeff. All right, so wh where can this be essential? Okay, so one particular person where it's essential was, and Chris will know this one, um, a particular person whose email account, you know how you have your security passwords? Well, their, their question was, what was your first car? And ironically, they have a whole blog posting of talking about their first car. So that would be one example. Um, you know, and that could be to your email, that could be to your bank account, um, your music playlist. How many people profile off your music playlist? Okay. Um, mothers. Okay. Another perfect example. The, a lot of times they'll choose like their kids' names. Okay. Their kids' names or their husbands' names as passwords. Men will pick like favorite sports teams. All right. So as this goes out and digs up that information, you can pretty much gain access to you know, unlimited things. Um, the other thing with, uh, say you were an agent and you wanted to target a specific person. So say you were an agent and you wanted to target Julian Assange. Okay, what are you going to do? You'll create a fake uh, Facebook account. You'll sit there. Um, you'll let it just hibernate for a while. Okay, so you'll deactivate it and then you'll reactivate it, say, the day an article comes out. Okay, an article comes out on Julian Assange. You activate the account that day. I guarantee you'll probably have about mm, close to 300 followers within that day or 300 friend requests or 300 likes. What can you do with that data then? You could profile everybody that likes Julian Assange and why. And look at their posts, what they'll put on this thread. All right, and this is the different types of things that it's being used for. And I was asked before, where has it been... Where have these types of attacks happened? Okay, so about three days after the article came out, they found out on JPost, which is a, a, a news blog over in Israel, they had used the same method to actually um, get access to a secret base because what they did was everybody on that base, they knew there was 285 people on that base. So only those 285 people were allowed on that base. So what happened was they created an account and swapped it out. They made it look like it was somebody on the base, so they automatically accept, and then they switched it out to who the actual person was. And it took them, you know, about a week before they realized that there was one extra person on that list. Another example of who uses this are bill collectors. All right, with this economy, um, you, you know, people owing money, Bill collectors are out there, they're, you know, they're profiling people, looking to see if they're really making money when they're not making money, because what? They're going to talk about it. They're going to say they're going on vacation. They're doing this. They're doing that. So they're doing it. The IRS is doing it. The FBI is doing it. And, you know, building fake profiles is nothing new. Um, Sean Moyer and them actually started this whole thing back in 2009, was it? And they did a couple of experiments. And this one was targeted to go a lot further, a lot deeper, um, just in a specific area. Their area is more, you know, will people fall for it? And then can you perform vulnerabilities? Can you do link injections? Can you do um, buffer overflows? <coughs> but since then, I, 
you know, like back at the end of last year is when they started tying all the different, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter all together now. And now I believe a couple of weeks ago they tied uh, Facebook into AOL Instant Messenger. So what happens is if you start sending out malware through the short new URL, whoa, like Bitly, all right, you have the potential of compromising not one person, but numerous people. Why? Because there's a lot of people out in that industry that sit there and they just keep sitting there retweeting. All right? And I'm sure you know what I mean. They sit there retweet, retweet, retweet. So it goes from your 256 followers to their 3,000. And it just propagates that much faster. Any other questions? No. No. I, I know a couple of people, and, and that's the whole point of research. I mean, Moyer and uh, Hamill started it off, okay? And then it's just branched out, okay? Because you have to stop and think about it. When I first started testing cross-site scriptings, was that back in about 2002? And then everyone started being like, oh, my God, it's so bad. It's about, what, 2006? So that's the whole point. So, you know, social media is just new. So it's everybody's job to sit there and go out and research just different areas. Not do a broad research, but just focus on an area. What does it do to a phone app? What does it do to, for social engineering? What does it do for profiling? Uh-huh. Well, no. Well, here's the reality of it. With like Facebook, you can actually delete the posts, um, but nobody's going to go back and delete it unless somebody's monitoring them. The responsible way of doing it for, say, Facebook, okay, because there was a big different focus. Facebook was for guys out in the field. LinkedIn was for their bosses. Okay, so there was a different profile there. So the guys out in the field. I mean, the thing that they have to realize is Facebook does have a bunch of different security settings. So you can, so say if Robin chose to be his friend, you know, and he's like, oh, she's hot. You can create a separate group, okay, for people not, that you're not sure about and just put them in that group, all right? If they're in that specific group, then you can prevent them from seeing your stream and other things like that, you know, viewing, only viewing certain photos, Well, Plaxo, Plaxo is one of those networks I noticed a lot of people put their information out and just forget it's there, All right? Like Chris had his, you know, birthday information off of everything, and then I saw it pop up on Plaxo. So that, I wish them a happy birthday. But the reality of it is, what? <laughs> you were the one who put it was in July. He didn't get a present. Here's your present. No, but the responsible thing to do is like some, certain things you may want to put misinformation, like as far as an actual year of birth, something that simple. Another thing is if you have a common name, leave out your middle initial. All right, because a, a middle initial alone.